Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with heart-shaped chocolate eclair. That's right, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. And not only am I going to show you how to make one of the world's greatest pastries, to do so, we're going to learn three of the most important pastry techniques of all time, which I know sounds like a lot, but they're very easy. And you can do this even if you've never made a pastry in your life. All right, that is my guarantee or your money back. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by splitting a vanilla bean, which I like to do by cutting in half first. And then what we'll do is take the point of our knife and we'll split this from the end right to the center. And then once we do have that split open, we will simply use the edge of our knife to scrape out all those beautiful seeds, which really don't look like seeds because they're so small. And we're basically getting what looks like tar. But you'll see as we make our pastry cream, those will all separate into tiny black specks that you may have seen the last time you had some real vanilla ice cream. And by the way, you can, if you want, also use the pods in the pastry cream, since they do have a little bit of flavor too. But we generally just use that sticky paste from the inside. And if you want, you can stick those pods in your container of sugar, and it will give it a nice subtle vanilla scent. But anyway, we'll go ahead and scrape one full vanilla bean, at which point we'll move on to the rest of the pastry cream ingredients, which will start with a little touch of white sugar, some cornstarch, as well as a nice big pinch of salt. And then we'll follow those dry ingredients with one whole egg, plus two egg yolks. And then at this point, we're going to add our milk. And as I did, something happened that's never happened to me even once in my 40 plus years in the industry. All right, somehow the milk hit one of those egg yolks, which acted as a trampoline. And this happened. I mean, what are the odds? Well, in this case, it was 100%. But really, it's like a million to one. But anyway, after cursing, I composed myself and I poured the rest of the milk in. Plus, I added a couple more teaspoons to make up for what I lost, and then cleaned up like it never happened. So that was unfortunate, but we never let the food win. And then speaking of winning, we'll go ahead and add our vanilla, and then we'll take a whisk and give this all a very good mix. And in case you're wondering, and if you're a pastry chef, you certainly are, my pastry cream recipe has like three less steps than usual. But over the years, I've discovered that all those extra steps really aren't necessary, as you are about to see. And no, there's no trick photography involved here. Since what we'll do once everything's mixed is place this over medium heat, and we will simply cook it stirring until it gets really thick. And believe it or not, that's it. All right, no pre-mixing the sugar and the cornstarch, or whisking the sugar and the eggs together, or tempering the eggs with hot milk so they don't curdle. None of that, as it turns out, is actually necessary. The only catch is you can't go anywhere, and we basically need to stir almost the whole time, or at least once the mixture gets hot and steamy. And if we pay attention and we keep stirring, making sure we're scraping the entire bottom surface of the pan, we will eventually end up with something that looks like this, which is almost but not quite there. So I'm gonna give this another 20 or 30 seconds until it looks a little something like this. Okay, you see how that custard is nice and thick and sort of sits on the top and holds a shape? That custard is done and cooked. So we'll quickly remove that from the heat and we'll give it another whisk to release some steam at which point we're going to stir in four chunks of cold butter, very gradually. Actually, I'm just kidding. We're going to dump those all in at once and stir. But just like all those other rules we just broke a little while ago, it's going to work beautifully. As long as you keep stirring and don't stop stirring until all the butter disappears. At which point, congratulations! You just made a world-class pastry cream in basically one step. And yes, I do hope Marco Pierre White's watching. And you probably don't even need to, but I generally do like to pass this through a strainer once I'm done. Not so much to catch scrambled eggs, but rather in case we had any fibrous bits from that vanilla pod. And as you can see, once this was passed through, we had very little left in the strainer. And then all we have left to do is wrap this tightly, at which point we have to refrigerate this until thoroughly, thoroughly chilled and firm. Okay, at least two or three hours, so please plan ahead. And once that's set, we can move on to the even easier pate chou dough which contains nothing more than butter, some water, a pinch of salt, and in a few minutes, some flour. And what we'll do is turn our heat up to medium high, and we will bring this all up to a simmer. And by the way, we do want to cut the butter into small pieces, since if you just put one big chunk in there, the water might start simmering before the butter melts. And by the time the butter is all melted, we might have too much water evaporate, which will throw off all our proportions. So be sure to cube it up. And then once that butter does melt and our water is simmering, we will dump our flour in all at once and we will stir everything together with a wooden spoon. 
until it comes together to form sort of a buttery dough. And what we're supposed to do is keep stirring and cooking this over medium high until sort of a starchy film forms on the bottom of the pan, at which point they say it's okay to transfer this into a bowl. But I like to do one extra step, and that is turn off the heat and keep stirring it for another minute in the pan. And what will happen is the moisture from that dough will sort of deglaze that starch off the bottom, and that way we're not going to lose anything. So that's what I did. At which point we can pull that off the heat and transfer it into a bowl, where we will finish this by whisking in two eggs one at a time. And one tip here, once you add the egg, just start by mixing a little bit of the dough in it first. And then once that's incorporated, we can mix it into the rest. And if it seems like it's not coming together, do not panic. All right, a French pastry dough can sense fear. Just keep stirring and you'll see. It will all pull together into a very sticky dough, most of which will probably end up in the inside of your whisk. But that's okay, just add the second egg and repeat that fearless stirring process until that second egg's been incorporated which point we can take a spatula and clean off our whisk. And believe it or not, that's it. You've just mastered one of the most important and one of the most versatile building block French pastry recipes. Oh, and I should mention, they say one way you can tell your dough is perfect is that if you pull up some of the mixture with your spatula like this, the dough that sticks and hangs off will form a perfect pointy V-shape. Check it out. Apparently this is perfect. And that's it. At this point, we can transfer that into a pastry bag or if you don't have one, a heavy-duty freezer bag. And we will snip off the tip to make about a half-inch opening. And then once we have our piping bag set up, we will proceed to pipe two heart shapes on a silpat line baking sheet. And what I like to do is a single pass to make the shapes. And then once we have two hearts drawn, we will use the rest of the dough to pipe on top of that to form a second layer, which should, if you're making them about this size, which are about six inches, should use up almost all the dough. And by the way, I don't usually like to speed up footage, but I'm going to here to save a little bit of time. Oh, and fun fact, if you hand me a pencil or a pen, I really can't draw a nice symmetrical heart. But for whatever reason, if you hand me a piping bag, I can. All right, somebody try to explain that. And then if we have any pate choux dough left in the bag after we piped our two hearts, we can go ahead and fill in any spots that seem a little sparse. Although you might be thinking, you are wrecking your nice smooth appearance. Well, that's okay because of the magic of wet fingers. Since once these are done, we can dip our fingers in a little bit of water and do any kind of fine tuning we want. All right, because that dough is so buttery and water and fat do not like to mix, our fingers will glide over that surface and they will not stick. And we can go ahead and fix any imperfections as we see fit. But please don't obsess too much here because like any kind of pastry based on pate choux dough, once it's baked, it's gonna look amazing and virtually any imperfections will bake out and you will not even know they were there. So we will fuss around until we're done fussing. And when that moment is, is up to you. I mean, you are after all the Pepe Le Pew of your pate choux. And at this point I decided mine were fine, so I stopped. Which means these are now ready to transfer into the center of a 425 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so, or until they're beautifully browned and look like this. Oh yeah, those are looking pretty good. But you only get a quick peek, because what we'll do is turn off the heat and open the door to the oven, and we will place these back in, and then we'll use a wooden spoon or something similar to keep the door open, and we will let our hearts sit in the oven for an hour to cool slowly. And not only will they cook a little bit more, but they will dry out beautifully, resulting in a perfect, non-soggy, crispy on the outside, pate choux. So that's one of the big secrets to this kind of pastry. And that's it. Once these are cool, we can go ahead and split one open with a serrated knife. And then we'll go around with our fingers, making sure we have lots of space to pipe our pastry cream. Which, once cold, we've transferred into a pastry bag, just like our dough. And yes, for a real eclair, you don't cut it open. We use a special nozzle on a pastry bag, and we pipe from each end, or for something like this, through multiple spots in the bottom. But since we're going to cover this with a chocolate ganache, I think this method is much easier and we can make sure our inside is 100% filled with our custard. And that's it, once we have that very generously filled, we'll go ahead and place on the top and get that position just right. And if any of that pastry cream leaks out, we're gonna need you to wipe it off with your finger and then clean your finger off in your mouth. And that's it, we've brought together two elements of our pastry, our perfect pate choux dough and equally magnificent pastry cream, which brings us to our third component, 
a chocolate ganache that we're going to cover it with. And to make that, we only need two ingredients, some dark chocolate chips and some very hot heavy cream. And what we'll do is pour that cream over our chips and we will let it sit for like two or three minutes before taking a whisk and giving it a stir. And just like when we were making our dough, when we first start stirring, it might look like something went wrong because it really does not look good when we first start out. But again, show no fear and just keep whisking. And as if by magic, it will all suddenly come together to form the most gorgeous, shiny, beautiful chocolate sauce you've ever seen. And by the way, as this cools, it's going to thicken up and eventually turn pretty firm. In fact, this is what the inside of chocolate truffles are made of. So if we're using it to basically frost something like we are here, we want to do that before it hardens up. So I just let mine cool for about five minutes before I took a spoon and applied it to the top of my heart. Oh, and the rest of this video is a perfect example of the difference between a chef and an actual pastry chef. Since a chef like me, or a home chef such as yourself, are more than happy just to spoon this over with very little concern for precision, whereas a professional patissier would probably put this in a piping bag with one of those like flat ribbon tips and do like a perfectly uniform layer over the top. But you know what? That's not us. We are going for what we call in the business a rustic look. Oh, and the other reason it does need to be perfect is we're going to go ahead and dust a little bit of cocoa over the top later, which will cover up a multitude of sins and hopefully give this somewhat of a professional look. And then once I was done, I decided to fill the center with raspberries, since this is for Valentine's Day after all. And of course, we're trying to get lots of compliments, except there was one slight issue, which we're going to go over in a second. But anyway, I filled that up. And then as I just mentioned, went around and dusted it with cocoa. All right, not too much. And then I really should have stopped there. But because I'm not a professional pastry chef, I decided to dust the berries with powdered sugar, except they were kind of wet in spots. So it sort of clumped up and did not look professional. And even after photoshopping it, so it would look better for the thumbnail. It still did not look that great. And besides that, I thought it was kind of looking like a Vegas buffet dessert. So just for fun, I tried another one where I just added one layer of raspberries on the bottom, which I thought might look a little nicer and provocative, but it really didn't. Plus the chocolate wasn't as neat. So I think I like the Vegas dessert buffet version better. But it was right here when I realized I'd been playing around too long and it was almost dark and I hadn't even gotten to the good part. Okay, you guys will figure out your presentation, but let me go ahead and cut in to show you the magnificence that is the chocolate eclair. And the reason this is one of the great pastries of all time is because of how perfect these three elements work together. Right, that crisp on the outside, non-soggy, beautifully cooked all the way through pate choux, filled with that luxurious perfect pastry cream that we splurged and used a real vanilla bean in. And then everything's brought together with that decadent chocolate ganache which if you let this chill in the fridge for a little bit like we're supposed to, will firm up into a glorious fudge-like texture. But like I said, it was getting dark. So I panicked and dug right in. And I know, I said a French pastry can sense fear, but not after it's done. That's only true while you're making it. Right, once you're finished, you can be as terrified as you want. But anyway, that's it. How to make a heart-shaped chocolate eclair. If you master this, you've mastered three essential French pastry techniques, and whether you end up making this for Valentine's Day or some other special occasion, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.